Well, good morning, TOD. We came to lift up the name of Jesus in this place. How many know that he's the Lion of Judah? And he rules and he reigns. Come on, clap those hands in the building. Here we go. He's the Lion of Judah. You are my Lord and King. You are my Lord and King. He's the Lion of Judah. You reign over everything. He's the Lion of Judah. You are the Great I Am. He's the Lion of Judah. Said He rules over all the land. And He's holy, mighty, worthy of the glory. Is holy, holy, mighty, mighty worthy, worthy of the glory. That's why I lift your name on high. I lift your name on high. Said I lift your name on high. Said I lift your name. Oh, come on, somebody! I wanna clap your hands in this room. Oh, he's a light of Judah. Holy, holy mighty, mighty worthy, worthy of the glory. Holy, You're holy, holy mighty, mighty worthy, worthy of the glory. That's why I lift your name on high. Said I lift your name on high. I lift your name on high. Said I lift your name. Oh. in this room. Oh, come on and lift him. Come on and lift him. Come on and lift him. Oh, yeah. Come on. Can y'all help me lift him up? Help me lift him up. Why? Because he's worthy. Why? Because he's holy. Higher and higher. Oh, help me lift him up. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's the great
Well, let's give the Lord a hand of praise on this morning. Come on, let's lift him up higher and higher. Isn't he worthy? Isn't the Lord good? Didn't he wake you up this morning? Did he start you on your way? Did he protect you from danger seeing and unseen? Come on and tell the Lord, thank you on this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is so worthy on this morning, and he is greatly to be praised. It is now prayer time, and I'm asking each of you to stand. If you're able to stand on this morning, even if you desire to stand on this morning, I'm asking you to stand by faith because our God is able, and our God is great and greatly to be praised. Come on, let's praise him on this morning. Oh, as we petition the throne of grace on this morning, if you're sick in your body, I want you to lift your hand. If you need a healing on this morning, I want you to lift your hand. If you're standing in the gap for somebody, I want you to lift your hand. Hey, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Lift your hands on this morning. Whatever you need from the Lord, the Lord is here to perform. The Lord is here to heal you, to deliver you, and to make you whole. Thank you, Jesus. Father in heaven, we thank you on today for your loving kindness. Thank you for your great mercy on today. Lord, you said in your word that if you shall set up the heaven, that there be no rain, that if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek your face, Lord, you said you will heal from heaven. You will heal our land. Lord, you said you will forgive our sins on today. Lord, I want you to forgive us on today. Forgive us of our sins on today. As we lift our hands to a holy God, we lift up our hands without wrath and without doubt on today because you are worthy. You are a worthy God. You are worthy of the praise that we give you on this morning. Lord, it is in this house that we ask that you come in right now. It is in this house that we have asked that your presence abide now. It is in this house that we glorify you and lift your name on high. For you are God above all God. And there's nobody like you nowhere. You are God Jehovah. You are God Jehovah. You are our God. And we worship you. And we praise your holy name. Lord, come in now and touch this man. Touch that woman, boy, and girl right now that's standing in need of a hand touch. Lord, you know what we need even before we ask. And God will look into you because we can't make it without you. Every step we take, every step we take, God, we need your help. You are the God that supply on this morning. And we're looking unto you today for all of our strength. We look unto you, God, for all that we need. Can't nobody do us like you on today. And we praise you right now. We honor your name. We praise your name. We praise your holy presence right now. In the name of Jesus, we come against the enemy in every way. We bind the devil on every hand. Bind him now, God, in the matchless name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning from the sky. And God, we trust in you. The devil can't do nothing without you allowing it. But God, you said, when you got up from the grave, you said that I have all power in my hand. And God, you have the power. And we're trusting in the power. We're trusting in the power in the name of Jesus. Lord, look on our president, look on our government today. And most of all, look on our leader, the Bishop Milton R. Hawkins on today. Look on First Lady Hawkins. Look on son Joshua. Look on mother Hawkins. And look on our bishop, father God. Touch them in a mighty way. Touch our leader and bless his family. And God even bless the cabinet that serves under him. All those that served in leadership at his whim. And we thank you for him right now. Thank you for the temple of deliverance family. Hey, hallelujah. That stands as a beacon of light in this community and around the world. Have your way. Bless our presiding bishop even now. The Bishop J.G. shared on today. Bless his family. Keep him in every way. Lead him now, oh God, in the matchless name of Jesus. And Lord, we know that you're going to take us higher, 
How you today? Oh God, touch a man servant. Lord, speak a word here today. Touch, oh my God, in the name of Jesus. Let your word come forth on today that we may be healed, delivered, and set free. It's in the matchless name of Jesus we pray and we yield ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints. It is now time for morning scripture. Scripture reading is coming from Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. Verse 15. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the floods or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I read in your hearing, Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doers of his most holy word. God bless you.
know that the Lord is our rooftop. Here we go. For he's my rooftop in the rage of the storm, yeah. He's my protector, and there will never be no harm. table yeah my god can do it he's surely able i'm gonna serve him i'm gonna serve him i'm gonna serve him
gonna serve you. the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Now I don't know about you but I came to celebrate and not meditate. If I've got some saints in the house somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Somebody ought to tell him thank you. Somebody ought to tell him I love you. For this is the 2021 Men's Day. Brothers shout hallelujah. Wait a minute, brothers, shout hallelujah. Brothers, shout hallelujah. Give him praise. Welcome, everyone. This is a brotherhood acknowledgement. When I was a young child, my parents taught me that if anybody gives you anything, the one thing you've got to say is simply, thank you. And so this morning, I want to begin by telling people that have helped the saints of God, thank you. First Thessalonians 5 and 12 and 13 tells us to know them that labor among you and to esteem them very high in love for their work's sake. We are all members of the household of faith and we all have different roles and work assignments to ensure the success of God's house. But the ultimate leadership of this house falls to only one person. That is the Bishop Milton Roscoe Hawking. That's right, stand up and give him, a, that's right. I wanna thank you, Pastor, for your leadership. I wanna thank you for your prayers and for your consultation. And on a funny note, I wanna thank you for helping me with my iPhone. I also want to thank the leader of the women's department, Sister Catherine Crawford Hawkins, who at every opportunity promoted Men's Month and the various activities. Now, everybody be seated. Everybody be quiet for a while. Let me tell you why. People deserve to hear their names called. I'm gonna take some time and call some people's names. I'm going to ask that you don't clap again until I get to the very end so that everybody can be clapped for and everybody can be recognized. Is that okay, church family? Amen. Keeping with our men's month theme, men and families serving the Lord with gladness, 
I want to thank some of our other church family members, beginning with the pastoral assistant, the elder Mark Wells, for coordinating the telephone prayer throughout the week and for facilitating the Ask for Me in My House walk. I also want to thank someone, the founder's wife, who has arrived, Sister Louise Dowdy Patterson, who let me know through prayer and an, even a text that she supports the church and she supports the men's department of Temple of Deliverance. I want to thank Brother Willie Douglas in the media department, and that includes Brother James Cross, Brother James Michael, Kevin Haywood, and my brothers at the back on the lights, Rick and Lee, I didn't forget you. I want to thank the media for what they do. I want to thank Sister Flo Bowie, Dr. Draper in the health and healing, Sister Cynthia Jones and the greeters, the ushers led by my brother and sister Tolliver, including the youth ushers led by Sister Donna Morris. I want to thank my best friend, Deacon Irvin Thomas, and the Deacon Board and the security team. I want to thank all the birth month presidents who took time to share information with God's people. I want to thank Brother Andrew Hayes and the men's praise team, along with our great ensemble of musicians led by the, none other than the great Brother Derek Jackson. I want to thank Brother Donnie and Manisha Weems and the youth department. I want to thank Chef Elder Steve Walker, the owner of Symbolic Manor Catering, who coordinated and prepared the food in October. I want to thank Elder Reginald Cooper, the owner of Cooper's Printing, who printed our beautiful t-shirts. I want to thank missionary Sister Rhonda Nelson, who assisted in getting updated communication out to all the saints. I want to thank Evangelist Demetrius Springfield Banks, who prayed and who assisted in a multitude of areas, including the coordinating of colors each Sunday. I want to thank Sister Sherby Grubbs, who cooked, who mopped, who swept, who did whatever. I want to thank District Missionary Yolanda Owens, who also assisted with communication efforts. I want to thank Elder Tim Lyons and the elders and the ministers. I want to thank Sister Amy Warwick, our graphic designer, my assistants and coordinators of the Ask for Me in My House t-shirt promotion, Brother Javon Marion and Deacon Andrew Taylor. I want to thank my brothers James Williamson and Brother Calvin Wordlaw, who coordinated the chicken dinner and vaccine pro promotion drive. Please, I want to thank them because they gave out a lot of chicken. I want to thank Elder Clark and his entire family. Why? Because during that time, his little boy was wrapping up uh, desserts for people. His wife and my son did promotion lines to get the chicken out. Everybody that did that, I want to thank you. And then I want to thank the announcer and the voice of the brotherhood, the elder Michael Scruggs. I want to thank Sister Willie Carol Simmons and Sister Pam Jones as our financial secretaries. Now, I waited until the end because there's one person I cannot leave out. That person who coordinated me <laughs> for 37 years. The Bible says that he who finds a wife finds it a good thing. I found a very, 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 I'm telling all y'all, very good thing. And I don't just say it here, I say it at home. And finally, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for this opportunity he has given me to work in his vineyard and to be numbered among the saints. We are living in some very crucial and confusing times. Our Christian faith and moral beliefs are being assaulted from the highest levels of leadership. We are constantly being told that things have changed and that right is wrong and wrong is right. But the brothers and I decided that for the month of October, we want the world to know that this is God's house, which makes it our house. And as for me in my house, we shall do what? We shall do what? God bless you. God keep you. Men's Day 2021. All right, that's right. Give it to the chairman. God bless you, Deacon Weaver. 
thank God for you and your labors here at Temple of Deliverance. Not let's give the greatest praise to the only God that exists. Let's give the greatest praise to the God of our salvation. Let's give the greatest praise to him that woke us up this morning. Let's give the greatest praise to our King, our Lord, our Savior, and our Deliverer. For the Bible said, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. And if you look at your neighbor, if they're not breathing, something's wrong. But if you're breathing, you ought to give God some praise in this house. And just take about 10 seconds to think about something that God has done for you. Think about something in 10 seconds, what the Lord has done for you. And then praise him for what he did. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We bless your name. Hallelujah. We thank you for your splendor. We thank you for your wonder. We thank you for your presence. Oh, God, in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We thank you for lifting burdens. We thank you for hearing the cry of the righteous. We thank you for meeting the needs of your people. We thank you for being good to us. Oh God, we feel deliverance in this house right now. We feel breakthrough in this house right now. We feel a miracle in this house right now. We feel the supernatural in this house right now. We feel chains being broken right now. We feel yokes being destroyed right now. There is a praise in this house right now. And there is a blessing with my name on it right now. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Be seated in his presence. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the glory of the Lord in this house. Hallelujah. Why don't you just for a moment become the captain of your robe? Don't look at anybody. You don't have to elect a captain. You are the captain of your, of your robe. And say, on this road, there will be deliverance. On this road, there will be healing. On this road, there will be breakthrough. You are the captain of your road. And you declare prosperity in your section. You prepare. You declare victory in your section. You declare breakthrough in your section. In the risers, on the floor. Wherever you're sitting at, you declare power in your section. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And it is so. And it is so. <laughs> Woo. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Mm. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Something good is going to happen in here today. Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Something good is going to happen in here today. <laughs> God bless, God bless all of you on this Lord's Day. We're getting ready. We're getting ready. Well, I, I'll give you 30 seconds real quick. I'll give you 30, 30 seconds 
real fast to give God a quick praise, a quick shout, a quick dance right where you are. Because I don't want to take up the preacher's time. Take your seats, take your seats, take your seats. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. God bless each and every one of you today. We honor the Lord for his presence with us on this morning. We thank God for evangelist Louise Patterson. God bless her. Thankful for her to be with us today. And we thank God for the fragrance of this house, First Lady Catherine Crawford Hawkins. Thank God for her on today. We're so blessed to be in the presence of the Lord and to have a great time in God. I'm going to ask for just a moment all of the men. I know, I know we're socially distant, and I know we're not the normal capacity that we would normally be because of COVID-19, but we still have a good house. And I want to ask all of the men, would you please stand? Let's see how many men are here today. Look at all these men in this house. Look at all, sisters, do you see all these men? Give the men a great God bless you. God bless the brothers at Temple of Deliverance. Thank you, brothers. One of my dear friends that we have enjoyed each other down through the years, I have asked him to come and share with us today, and he accepted the invitation. Now, you all are going to have to pray for your pastor later, because all of these great men that I have asked to come and speak for us. I've told them, I say, you don't know I'm not going anywhere. I say, you all, I'm inviting you to me, but now nah, don't expect me to come back real soon. I'm waiting on things to get a little bit better. And then you all have to pray for me because I'll be doing a lot of traveling, making up. <laughs> but this pastor, this bishop, he has left his jurisdiction, he has left his local church to travel, he's left his wife and his family to travel to be with us today. I think that's extraordinary. Amen. He is no stranger to us, he has been with us before. And that is the reason he's back, because he is a dynamic man of God. The Bishop Destry C. Bell is a product of the C.H. Mason Bible College, Cornerstone University, Calvary Theological Seminary. He has a Bachelor's of Art in, tech, in Theology, a Master's in Christian Counseling, and a Doctorate in Theology. He is one of the bright minds of our church, and you will be hearing his name from henceforth. He's a powerful preacher and proclaimer of truth. He is the celebrated founding pastor of the Christ Temple of Deliverance, Church of God in Christ in Houston, Texas. He was elected in uh, dual terms, back-to-back -back terms, as the vice chairman 
of the General Council of Pastors and Elders. He was consecrated as the jurisdictional bishop as the Texas Gulf Coast Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction by the presiding bishop emeritus, Bishop Charles Edward Blake, Sr. And he has most recently been appointed as the commissioner of ecclesiastical services by our presiding bishop, J. Drew Sheard. He is a preacher's preacher. He is our friend and our brother. After the praise team shall return with the sermonic selection, we will stand to our feet and receive joyfully our 2021 annual Men's Day guest speaker, the Bishop Destry C. Bell. Say amen. Holy hands and we cry. 
like you know where you're our savior and we proclaim that you're holy hey, worship you on this morning because you're holy, 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 holy. You're the great I am. You, 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 you are holy. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You know he's holy. Ho, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. He's holy. He's holy. He's holy. Why don't you say it one more time? He's holy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. How many of you know our God is holy? You can always depend on him to be the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's holy. Holy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Holy. Holy. Oh, 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 can, can we take it to the roof? Come on, say it. He's holy. Oh, holy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our God, our God, our God. My mind. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we give you glory and we give you honor. You are our God, you are our strength, you are our provider, you are our protector. And so, Lord, we thank you for this very royal and distinguished privilege to stand at this sacred desk to speak to your people. I ask you now, Master, if you would, give me clarity of thought and articulation of speech. Give me what to say and how to say that your people will be blessed, that your people will be healed and delivered. We want to say thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. And Lord, out of all that has happened in our world, in our country over the past two years, you have kept us. You have sustained us. And so, Lord, we give you glory and we thank you. We could be dead, sleeping in our grave, but you made the virus behave. And we are covered under your blood. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're covered under your blood. Your blood, your blood, your blood still works. Your blood still heals. Your blood still delivers. That man, that woman who's suffering right now, I rebuke death and I speak life. In the name of Jesus, be healed, be delivered, and be set free. Why don't you praise him right there? We ask it all in the matchless, marvelous, majestic name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It is with a distinguished honor today that I stand before you. I honor God, the head of my life. And I give God the glory for all that he has done for me and sustained me on today. 
to your celebrated pastor, my dear friend and brother, the right reverend, the bishop, Milton Hawkins. Let's celebrate him. <laughs> celebrate him. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Come on, let's celebrate him. Amen. You got to remember, you know, that your pastor is a gift. Amen. And to the fragrance of this house, uh, to Lady Catherine Hawkins, who's not present at the moment, but let's celebrate her. Come on, amen. And to the founding madam of Temple of Deliverance, Church of God in Christ, bountiful blessings worldwide. <laughs> Mother Evangelist Louise Patterson, and she know I love her and respect her greatly on today. Uh, she's a dear soul, and I love you, Mother, with all my heart, and I'm so glad to be here today and to see you and to be with the Temple of Deliverance family. Amen. I have to uh, say this because I would be remiss if I didn't, but I always, when I come, I like to remember the life and legacy of the great apostle the great apostle of the Gilbert Earl Patterson, the late presiding bishop and chief apostle of the Church of God in Christ worldwide. Let's celebrate his memory. My wife extends her greetings, Lady Rita Bell from the great city of Houston, Texas, to you, Bishop Hawkins, your wife, and to Mother Patterson. She loves you all and respects you dearly. And uh, to all of the men in the house today, all the men, come on, say, hey, won't, won't the women give the men a hand? Come on, give the women a hand. Amen. Amen. To your very fine director of your men's ministry and to all of you who work in the labor of the Lord. I won't belabor your time long. There is a passage of scripture found in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 27 through 30. I want you to pray with me because I believe that every time we stand, we should depend on the Lord to speak to his people. If you want to stand with me for the reading of the word, it would oblige us. Thank you so much. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I'm able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it done to you. And their eyes were open, and Jesus sternly or straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. I'm going to preach from the subject for a few fleeting moments. Two blind men follow Jesus. You may be seated. Two blind men followed Jesus. My brothers and sisters, the eyes are the windows to the soul. It is an expression that is often used to describe the deep connection one feels when looking into another's eyes. However, like windows, the eyes work both ways. They are not only important in seeing 
into another person's soul, but they are also vital in how we view the world around us. Are y'all going to pray with me? You see, sight and vision are important because they allow us to connect with our surroundings. Mm -hmm. Keep us safe and help us maintain the sharpness of our minds. You see, sight and vision are different entities. Sight is physical and it is sensory. It is a sensory experience in which light reflects off shapes and objects and the eyes then focus this light, signals it, signals or then signals it, signals are sent to the brain to convert those images into reality. I'm talking about sight and vision. Sight and vision are different entities. They are, they are, they are. But vision is a metaphysical or metaphysical concept. Sight may allow a person to witness an event, but vision helps the person understand the significance of that event and draws interpretations. You see, the two are harmonious and are very important in our everyday lives. Sight and vision help to connect people with their surroundings. Our world is filled with an extreme variety of colors, shapes, and guess what, my brothers and sisters, patterns. Sight gives us the ability to perceive movement and vision gives us the ability to make assessments about that movement. For example, you see a dog catch a frisbee in the park. He brings the frisbee back to his owner and the owner gives the dog a pat on the head. Your vision tells you that the dog and his owner has a loving relationship. And that's the dog that the dog enjoys playing in the park and catching frisbees. But sight and vision are important because they bring beauty and understanding of the world in which we live. They also keep us safe. You see, the two concepts, if y'all pray with me, I'm going somewhere. The two concepts work together to provide awareness of the dangers around us. A person who can see a car coming knows to stay on the sidewalk so they won't get hit. Do I have a witness here? In fact, sight is arguably the most important sense for safety and self-preservation. Protecting your eyes and your sight is highly important so that you may avoid harm. And finally, sight and vision keeps our minds sharp and alert. It is important to maintain your eyesight so that you may continue to connect with the world and make quick assessments of whatever situation comes your way. See, frequently, stimulation of the mind and uh, uh, philosophical uh, is interpretations of one's sense or vision, which helps the overall health of the person's intelligence. You got to know, as the quote stated, keep your eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground relates to vision. While one might say that they are literally standing and looking at the sky, there is truly more to that quote by Theodore Roosevelt's words. The message is to aim high, set goals for yourself, have great ambition and high expectations for your life and for your future. However, do not forget to remain grounded and humble Be realistic about your life while never letting go of your dream and your vision. 
when we look at the Bible concept of blindness, you know, physical blindness in the Bible is, was in a, in a biblical period suggested that, that one might be blind because of the sins of his parents or the sins of himself. As recorded in John chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. But you see, you must understand the severe handicap of being blind was crucial back in that day. You see, if a man was blind, there were certain responsibilities that he couldn't do. He couldn't carry out. He was prohibited, basically, from making a livelihood in those days. But when we look at blindness or the impairedness of sight in the United States of America, a finding in 2018 from the National Health Interview Survey data released an astounding estimate. It said 32.2 million adult Americans are blind or cannot see clearly. That's physical blindness. But think about how many more are spiritually blind, cannot see, cannot know God, cannot perceive God, cannot walk in the presence of God and feel his presence, sense his presence because they are spiritually blind. Oh, y'all pray with me here. So my brothers and sisters, what does the Bible say about spiritual blindness? You know, there are verses about spiritual blindness in the Bible, such as in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 8, where, the, where he wrote, bring out the people who are blind and yet have eyes, who are deaf and yet have ears. And in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28 through 29, where it was said, the Lord will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of the mind. My brothers and sisters, we are living in a time that if you see the blindness of the world on display, you see it like we've never seen it before. We see spiritual blindness, yes, even in the church. A lot of folk operating because they know what to do, but not because God is saying do anything. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. There was a time when we trusted God, we believed on God, we came and we laid before God to say, Lord, lead us and guide us in every direction. But now we jump up and do things in haste without seeking the Lord, without calling on the name of the Lord. And I want to challenge every man in this house who stands as a married man, as a father, as a husband, and whether you're married or not, but if you are married, you are the priest, you are the prophet, you are the provider, and you are the protector. And if you can't see, how are you going to protect what... <laughs> What God has given you stood up. Too many of us brothers are blind. We make mistakes, foolish mistakes, because we are blind spiritually. We treat our wives bad, our children worse, because we have been blinded by the devil. That we cannot see or comprehend the gift that they bring into our lives because we are blind, walking around talking about, I'm the man, I'm the head, respect me, give me some respect. I want to tell you, brother, being a husband don't automatically give you respect. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. Being a father doesn't automatically give you respect. Are y'all going to pray with me? Yeah, it, 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 doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't automatically give you any respect. You know, I'm reminded of a story I heard. Some years ago, a, pa a young man walked into the pastor's office for some counsel, and he began by telling his pastor, I'm having some problems with my mother and my sisters. I'm having some real problems with them. They won't give me the respect I'm due as a man. So the pastor said to him, sir, please sit down for a minute because I need to ask you a few questions to gain some understanding about what you're bringing to me. 
do, do I have anybody going to talk to me? He said, sir, may I ask you one question? Where do you live? He said, with my mama. <laughs> oh, y'all going to pray? Yeah, okay. He asked another question. Who pays the rent or the mortgage? He said, my mama. <laughs> oh, y'all going to help me say it? Y'all going to help me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Who buys the food that you eat? He said, my mama. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the pastor asked him, who brought the bed that he lays down to go to sleep in every night? He said, my mama. Are oh, y'all going to help me preach here in a moment? Uh, and so, so the pastor concluded, he said, to, he said to him, he said, boy, let me tell you something. Let, let me tell you something. When you get your own house, pay your own rent, buy your own food, buy your own bed, y'all don't hear what I'm saying, then you can stand flat-footed in your house and get the respect that's due to you. Are y'all praying with me? He was blind. He wants respect, but they hadn't done anything. Still living with your mama, talking about, I, 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 I'm, I want some respect. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I, I, I need some respect. Let me tell you something about a real man. A real man don't have to have nobody tell him what to do. A real man will get up and take care of his own business. He'll make sure the lights is paid, the mortgage is paid, the life insurance is paid. He'll make sure there's food on the table. The light. Y'all don't want to help me out. I'm talking about a real man. And some of you women have settled for boys. You just want to have a pair of pants in the house. I just don't want to be alone. So you settling for anything. You look up, the man, the boy you bought in your house is raping your daughter, molesting your little boys, choking and beating them like they stole something. I'm trying to tell you something because you're trying to have a man. I just want to be, I just want, I just got to have a man. No, you got the devil in you. You, you are confused. You are conundrum. You are messed up. Stop settling. Good sex ain't everything. Oh, y'all don't like my preaching, y'all. Y'all real sanctified. I see. Because when all that's over with, okay, I go on. When all that's over with, he going to get up and leave you with four or five babies, a whole lot of bills, and he going to move in with another woman who got seven children, and she going to take care of him. A real woman, let me tell you something, a real woman will never take care of a man. And let me go back deeper. A real man won't let a woman take care of him. Y'all with all this new, new kind of dating now. Well, you know, I get the check one time. You know, I let her pick up the check. You know, she pick up the check. Yeah, I let her pick up the check. Yeah, she, you know, this modern day now. She, 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 she pick up the check. Listen, let me tell you something. If he's cheap, don't marry him. Make sure, if he can't, he blind now, he can't see the check. He, he blind, he can't see the check. Then asking you out the corner, oh, did you get it, did you get it, did you get it, did you get it? I'm not going to sit at the table and my, my wife sitting there, my daughter sitting there, she married and grown, married and grown. They bring a check and I'm going to let them pay for it? Oh, I'm going to leave y'all alone. Okay, okay. But because women have become women, the Bible says silly women, never learning, you know. We, 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 we put up with a whole lot of stuff. And if you put up with stuff that's not polite, not opening the door for you, not honoring you, and, and, and not celebrating you, then you deserve what you get. But if you are a real woman of standard and righteousness, 
You're going to say, how can a blind man lead me around? He's blind. Because he's blind, he can't appreciate the gift that God has given him. But men with real vision, they can take a woman out the shelter. And they don't see a woman in the shelter. God give them vision to see what she can become. I'm not saying that we all bad and everybody's sorry. And everybody, and that's not the truth. But I am saying that we ought to have sense enough to know that when the relationship is going somewhere and when it's not. In our text, let me hurry. In, in our text, I mean, because some of the stuff y'all putting up with Ray Charles is blind and dead. He can see. <laughs> Don't be asleep, y'all. Let me just, let me just park here a minute. I'm going to go on in a minute, but I, somebody, the Holy Spirit want me to warn, and maybe somebody you connected to that you need to go back and warn. Tell that sister and that brother, don't rush to do that. Don't just be glad to have a man, but you want the right man. And I know the devil talking to you. My clock is ticking. Yes, all our clocks are ticking. But you better wait on the Lord. Because if you don't wait on the Lord, you're going to be miserable day and night, day and night, trying to find out where Chumbo is. I'm talking about blind men, but women, don't you be blind. He's not dropping you off at work and driving your car all day long through the hood. Oh, let me leave it alone. But in our text, it looks as though Matthew broadly basing himself on the tradition behind Matthew's gospel, chapter 20, verses 29 through 34, as taking the opportunity to formulate an account that draws together motives from the range of healings accounts and relates materials that he and related with materials that he has presented throughout chapters eight and nine. Matthew leaves the reader to imagine how these two blind men could manage to follow Jesus. They were, the Bible said, blind. And as you read and study and take a careful observation and excavation of chapter 8 and 9, you see Jesus on his healing ministry journey. They were blind. How could these two blind men who could not see physically follow Jesus? I want to just suggest to you that these blind men had been following Jesus because the noise had went out that he was healing the sick, raising the dead. You know, I believe the blind men were there when the ruler of the synagogue came to him and said, my daughter is lying at the point of death. And Jesus turns and says to, to, the, to the ruler, says, hey, uh, don't be afraid, only believe. And while he was on his way to the ruler's house, he's interrupted by a woman having an issue of blood. I believe that these blind men were following the noise. They couldn't see, but the church was making noise. The church was praising the Lord. The church was carrying on. So after every miracle, it was a commotion. And Jesus had gone into the house to raise a young girl from the dead. And the blind men couldn't go in. They was outside. But the Bible says when he departed, 
two blind men followed Jesus. How did they follow Jesus? How do the blind follow Jesus? You got to understand, for anybody blind to follow anybody, they got to trust them. And are you telling me, I got you, man. Come on, come on. I got you. And you let me fall one time. You're not going to have me no more. Because I'm not going to trust you anymore. Do you hear what I'm saying? I believe, I believe they had to follow him with a spirit of expectation. They had, they couldn't see it, but they could hear the miracles taking place. So then faith cometh by hearing. It wasn't, necess it wasn't necessary that they be able to see it physically, but they was able to hear the commotion that was happening, that was going on. You know, one writer picked it up, said, we walk by faith and not by sight. You're not going to see everything. So, so what are you saying? How could two blind men follow Jesus? Because just because they were blind didn't mean they didn't have any vision. They may have not had physical sight, but they had spiritual insight. They had to walk, not knowing what they was going to see or what was, what they was, who was going to come up on them, what was going to happen. They had to walk by faith. The text tells us, tells us this, that when he departed, they followed Jesus. Now, I don't care what your blindness is. If it's spiritual blindness, yeah, you got some issues spiritually, morally. I'm glad you came to church today. Because you're following Jesus. You walked in the room today. You don't have all the answers to your situations. You don't have all the answers to your circumstance. You don't have all the answers to all the things that are happening in your life. But guess what? You came to Jesus. And the Bible says, and as Jesus went into a house, they came in to Jesus. Jesus, knowing they seek, and he asked them this question, do you believe I can do this? Hallelujah. There was that word again, believe, because he asked Jairus, he, say, don't be, he told Jairus, don't be afraid, only believe. And if you can't see spiritually today, I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that God has a plan for you. The word is right. Come unto me, all you that have a laden and burden, and I will give you rest. Come to Jesus. And if you come to Jesus, he will open your eyes. The text said, he laid hands on their eyes and touched them. And their eyes were open. Now, how are you going to see? How am I going to get through this challenge? Just one touch from the Lord will heal my broken heart. Just one touch from the Lord will make that man come back home from out that other woman's house. Just one touch from the Lord will take that boy off of drugs and crack and cocaine. Just one touch. Just one touch. Men, I know that the burden of life can be heavy. Being the provider, being the protector, being the partner, being the priest, it can be at times overwhelming. But you got to be willing to allow the Lord to be your help. Being a black man in America. Y'all don't want to talk to me, I see. I'm almost done. Being a black man in America. Well, we're more twice, three, four, five times more likely to be shot down by a police to be racially profiled, huh? to be accused when we weren't even in the area because we were jogging while being black. Shot down, run over, knee placed on your neck, choked till you're dead because your life to other folk don't mean nothing. The problem with the other folk is that they blind. They can't see that princes and kings 
came from the African American, came from the African continent. We are somebody because God made us somebody. And they're crying. They recognize the Masonic anointing. They recognize the prophetic fulfillment. Thou son of David, have mercy on us. I'm glad y'all came in the house today so he could have mercy on you. I know you messed up. I know you went outside the marriage. I know you made some bad decisions. I know, but he came, you came today. He's having mercy on you. Tell somebody, mercy, mercy. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I'm going to tell you, I don't know where I would be. I don't know where I would be. You know, I've been in church all my life, so I'm going to tell you, I was a sinner going to church. I was singing in the choir and a sinner. I know y'all had never been that way. I, I was, amen. I was, I, was, I was saying, preach, Reverend. I was, I was in church and needed God. I was in church and was blind. But one day, the Lord, he touched me. As I go to my clothes, I got to tell you that there are going to be many struggles, my brothers, in life that the only way you're going to get through them is by the help of the Lord. Father, I stretch my hand to thee, no other help. I know, God, if you don't help me, I won't be helped. How many of y'all know that God, if God don't do it, it won't be done? How many of you know that if it wasn't for God, you would be dead now? God brought some of you brothers back from prostate cancer, brought, back, brought, you back, brought you back from heart attacks, brought you back from a congestive heart failure. He brought you back. He made a way out of no way. When they wouldn't give you a job, God kept your house from being foreclosed. God made a way when you couldn't see how. You were blind to how God was going to do it. He made a way. I'm going to my seat, but I want to tell you that we're going to have challenges in our life. There are going to be things that we're not going to be able to deal with. But I came to let you know that it really don't matter how difficult life will and may be presently. God has his hand on your life. Can I get a witness here? But um, you have to make up in your mind that it might be weary, it may be weary, but I'm going to trust in the Lord. I may not be able to see which way I'm going, but I'm glad to tell you that the Lord is a very present help. Can I get a witness here? I just want to know, is it anybody here this morning that ever had to lean and depend on Jesus? Won't God make a way somehow? Yeah, I'm glad to tell you I've been through storms and rain. I've been through heartache and pain. But God always brings me out can we say yeah I just want you to know that God is a very present help I'm gonna close when I tell you a story one day a father and his son was riding the bike through their neighborhood they were riding one day after a severe storm it had knocked tree limbs down it had knocked bridges down it was a terrible storm and while all along the path the son and the father rode up uh, uh, where they seen a big tree land across their bike trail and the father said son jump down and move that tree oh God the boy jumped down with all his energy he went down and began to pull begin to tug begin to pull and begin to tug 
with weariness and frustration in his eyes, he looked back at his father and said, I can't move it. He said, I can't do it. The father said, oh, yes, you can. You can move it, son. Have you used all of your available options? He said, what do you mean? He said, have you used all your available options? The boy went back to the tree, began to move, try to move the tree, and try to push it over or roll it out. But he was still unsuccessful. The father just sitting there, relaxed in his mind. The boy turned around with tears in his eyes. He said, I can't move it. He said, well, did you use all of your available, available resources? He said, yes. He said, no, you didn't. He said, you didn't ask me to help you move the tree. Man, I want to say to you, there may be some burdens. There may be some pain. There may be some heartache. But I'm glad to tell you, we have a Savior. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He'll bear your burden. He will wipe your tears away. Won't God do it? Oh, won't he do it? Yeah. I say God will take care of you. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I want to encourage someone. I know you can't high five nobody. I know you can't grab nobody. But just look at them and say, be not dismayed. Whatever be time. God, God will, God will take care of you. Won't he do it? Hey, hey, won't he do it? Won't he bring you out? Won't he make a way? Won't he put food on your table? How do you know, Bell? I, I, I tried him. I said I tried him. I tried him. Anybody here tried him? Won't he make a way? I got a question for you. Ain't he all right? I want to ask you again, ain't he all right? Oh, yes. I'm going to my seat. But amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Blind, but now I see. Why don't you walk? Why don't you walk in your row and say, I'm all right now? My sight has been restored. My joy has been restored. I'm going to hold on. What are you going to do? I'm going to hold his hand. He's going to extend grace to me. Because of his grace, I can face tomorrow. Because of his grace, I can cross the uncrossable. Because of his grace, I can do the undoable. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many of y'all believe better is on the way? Better is coming to your house. Better is coming to your body. Your financial situation is going to be better. I want you to get ready to rejoice and say with me, what's coming is better than what's been. <laughs> Come on, say it again. Say, what's coming is better than what's been. Better. 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 Better health. Better marriage. Better children. Better church. Better.
everybody standing. Better is coming. But you got to be willing to do what the blind men did. They followed Jesus. Which also tell me, you don't have to be perfect to follow him. You may have an ailment. You may not have the spiritual integrity that you want to have or you shall have. Maybe there's some things that's got you pinned up, tied up, shacked up, messed up. But keep coming to church. <laughs> Lift your hands. Reminded of a story I heard there was some a scientific study done many, many years ago over in Russia where they filled a pool up full of water and they dropped some rats in the pool so they could discover what their endurance was. The rats swam 15 minutes and when it looked like they was about to give up, they were swooped out of the water, they was dried off and laid to the side to rest a few moments. A few moments later, the scientists picked them back up, threw them back in the water. The rats swimmed. Not only 15 minutes, not only an hour, not only 24 hours or 48 hours. The rats swim over 60 hours because them being rescued after the first 15 minutes told them that if they kept swimming long enough, that eventually they would be rescued. And so I want to tell somebody here, keep swimming. Your deliverance, <laughs> your deliverance, <laughs> your deliverance is at the door, is here right now. If you don't know the Lord Jesus in the pardon of your sin, you can raise your hand. You want to be saved, you want to be delivered, you want to be set free, you can pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sin. I'm so sorry. I've messed up so many times. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me in the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Wash me, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be whiter than snow. Please, Lord, wash me, cleanse me, renew me, restore me back to the family of God and into the family of God. I'm sorry, for with the mouth I confess and with the heart I believe the Lord Jesus that I'm saved. In the matchless, marvelous, majestic name of our Lord and Savior, I believe it that Jesus Christ is seated on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me right at this moment, right at this time, right at this moment. So, Lord, I thank you for salvation. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for salvation. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. If you're here today, you desire a church home to be here at this wonderful Temple of Deliverance Church, and you desire to be a part of this ministry in this church, I'm going to ask you to stand all over the building, wherever you may be, right where you are. You can stand right where you are, and someone will come to you and have the appropriate information filled out if you are present, if that is you, you desire to be a part. All right. Look like everybody is family today. Amen. I want to just also just share and challenge you all today to give very liberally in this offering. Every man has been asked for a hundred dollar seed, a hundred dollar seed gift. Amen. A hundred dollar seed, a hundred dollar seed. I'm going to give five hundred dollars today to support the men of this ministry. I'm going to give five hundred dollars today to do that. 
And as your pastor comes, he's going to lead you farther as it relates to the tithe and giving. But know this, you cannot beat God giving. Every man, $100. Sister, if your husband is not here, give $100 for them, for him. Amen. You say, well, I don't have a husband. Give $100 in faith that God will give you a godly man that would love you and take care of you the way God says it should be. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you. Give God praise and glory for this great word that we had on today. What a word. What a word. What a word. What a word. Come on, let's thank God for the Bishop Destry Bell. He is a dynamic preacher. And if you listen to that message, he dropped a lot of nuggets, dropped a lot of nuggets that will help us in life to navigate these difficult terrains, these difficult journeys that we take. He gave us some tools for thought. Everybody in this house ought to feel better right now. You ought to feel better right now. Those that are watching online, we pray that you feel better on today. And of course, you are able to join the church online. You can connect with us at info at todkojic.org. And you may join online. We'd love to have you as an online member. And again, just in case you did not hear him clearly, if you'd like to be a member today, it's not too late. Wave your hand at me. Get my attention. And we would love to have you as a member here at Temple of Deliverance. We'd love to have you on today. We thank God for your coming, and we certainly trust that you will come back and be with us again in a future service. Let's again appreciate God for the message on today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bishop Bell reiterated what our chairman, Deacon Kevin Weaver, have asked of the brethren to give $100 on today, and we've asked the ladies to give a $25 gift. This is in addition to your tithe and offering. We're asking everyone to please do that. If you have not already received an offering envelope, please elevate your hand. Deacons, as well as our male ushers, are on the floor right now. Sister Rhonda has her hand up here in the front row of the missionaries section and then many of us have given already and are giving again i appreciate thank you bishop bell for 500 dollars supporting the men on today god bless bishop bell i too am giving the 500 dollars offering today for men's day and we thank god for the opportunity to share we thank for the opportunity to share. All the platforms are on the screen now for those of you worshiping with us online and those of you here in the sanctuary, you have the opportunities to give through the GiveLify app, the PayPal system, text to give, the number that you see on the screen to dial for credit card donations, as well as the traditional envelope that we still use. Oh, I'm excited about Men's Day. It's been a great, great day. And been a great month. Amen. You know, today is so great. Not one time have I mentioned that other name today. Yeah, you got it. Today is the Lord's Day. Today is the Lord's Day. We hollow his name. <laughs> yeah, we, we hollow his name. 
Amen. Amen. All right. Are you ready? All right. We'll be back in prayer on tomorrow morning. And, of course, um, Tuesday Bible study, Facebook Live at 730 Look forward to having a great time in the Lord. Next Sunday is first Sunday. Communion will be served at the 745 a.m. service. And then those that will be watching online, you'll be able to have your crackers and juice and participate with us online. And daylight savings time. We will revert back and fall back one hour this Saturday night before we go to bed. Please make your all right, anybody trying to get my attention? I'm saying it right, right? All right, we're falling back one hour on this Saturday night before we go to bed so that we'll be on time for church Sunday. Amen, amen. You have your gifts and your phones and whatever devices that you use to give by. Please lift them before the Lord. Father, thank you again for the outpouring of your presence on this day. Thank you for this men's month. Thank you, Lord, for the tithe, the offering, the special contributions that both the men and women are giving for this annual men's day. We pray, God, that you would bless both the gift and the giver and return back to the giver some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Rebuke the devourer for our sake. And then, Lord, pour us out a blessing that we would not even have room enough to receive. We thank you now for the favor, the prosperity, the benefits, and the blessings that are coming our way. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you. I'm going to ask everyone on the main floor if you would remain seated. And of course, our risers, we've got a lot of people in the risers today, so we'll start here at the ends and get those out of the risers. Ushers will